I have been hearing for years about how great spectacular spider-man is some people have told me that it's the greatest spider-man animated series of all time which i sort of scoffed at at first because i'm a product of the 90s i grew up in the 90s so i grew up on that 90s spider-man animated series that's my baby that's my jam so now, though, courtesy of Disney+, Plus, I was able to watch all of these episodes. And let me just say, first of all, I really enjoyed watching this series. I did. It was a lot of fun. It did so much so right. And I can definitely understand the love and appreciation for it. It begins with Spider-Man already being Spider-Man. There's no origin. There's no like, hey, guys, I'm just a normal kid who gets bit. No, he's already swinging through the city. He's already in costume and he already has his powers. Thank God. I was so relieved and so happy at this. And it's not that I dislike Spider-Man's origin. I don't. He actually has one of the strongest origins in comic book history. It's just it's been done to death. We've seen it countless and countless times. And so this was refreshing. Now, of course, in later episodes, they eventually do a flashback of his origin, of the spider bite, of the death of Uncle Ben. And that was fine because they used it to further Peter's story or further his arc in the particular episode that he was dealing with. That was great. But it was also cool to see this version of Spider-Man's origin, at least in a different way. So all of that made a lot of sense. I loved how they were able to have Uncle Ben give Peter advice when he was dealing with a bunch of stuff. Josh Keaton does the voice of Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. And I think he does a great job. When I hear his voice, I instantly think, yeah, this is a really good, accurate Spider-Man. Gwen Stacy is one of Peter's friends in high school, and you can instantly tell that Gwen Stacy has a major crush on Peter. It's a little frustrating that Peter can't see it, that it's not as obvious to him. I mean, there are various points where he's literally talking to Gwen about either a, another girl that he likes, or maybe he's looking for a date himself, and Gwen's kind of just standing there like, um, yeah, Pete. You know, there's, if only there was somebody right there in front of you. And Pete's like, yeah, oh, well, I'm going to just go, go to class or go to do something else. <laughs> it's like, Pete, wake the hell up. There's even a point where she kisses Peter during the holidays. And I thought to myself, oh, wow, this is great. We're finally going to get progression in their relationship. We're going to see what their relationship will look like in this series only to see that he starts dating Liz Allen instead. I was like, what the hell? Wait, so Peter gets kissed by Gwen. He obviously now knows that Gwen is interested in him, and he doesn't talk to her for weeks. Now, granted, she also doesn't go up to him and talk to him, but she it comes across very early on that Gwen, this Gwen, is very shy, and that took a lot for her to go up to him and kiss him like that so I don't get it I don't especially when you see Peter interact with other girls he is very confident dating a girl like Liz Allen come on dude Liz Allen is a cheerleader she's a girl that's surrounded by nothing but the popular kids it just it blew my mind it made me want to shake this kid smack him across the face and say dude just go for it and I thought to myself all right maybe it's because it's too early on maybe they want to stretch this out, drag out the eventual Peter and Gwen relationship. But no, he ends up dating Liz Allen for a long time, for multiple, multiple episodes. And I thought at first that Liz Allen was going to be a bitch. I thought Liz Allen was going to be just this mean girl that Peter doesn't know how to get away from. But no, Liz ends up being really nice and really supportive and and just somebody who, even when Peter is always late for their dates or just doesn't show up at all because obviously he's out there doing Spider-Man stuff. She's very understanding. She doesn't get 
as mad as I expected her to. I mean, she's a little disappointed, but she's always willing to believe and listen to him. So I thought, wow, well, maybe I read this all wrong. Maybe Liz Allen is the right girl for him, at least at this time in his life. Until Pete just kind of up and randomly decides, I want to date Gwen. (laughs) It's been too long. I've been milking this for too long. So he decides, all right, I'm going to confess my love for Gwen. He does so. And the two of them basically decide, hey, we're going to date if you break up with Liz. And Peter goes and breaks up with her. (laughs) Kind of messed up. I mean, granted, breaking up with her first is much better than cheating on her and just doing stuff with Gwen. Like, at least he did that. But still, I kind of felt bad for the Liz character. I kind of sat back and thought, man, this is a little, (laughs) this is a little messed up. And then I thought back to my days in high school and thought, oh, okay, I guess we, us guys do do stuff like this to girls who don't really deserve it, don't we? Harry Osborn is Peter's best friend, and Harry, it's interesting because this version of Harry, he's nothing like the James Franco Harry Osborn, right? He's not as cool. He's definitely more on the nerdier side, the smaller side. He's even so... Uh, not confident that he starts taking drugs in order to play better in football. Now, when I say drugs, not like hardcore drugs, it's, it's cartoon drugs. It's this green liquid that came from a lab and it helps enhance his ability, makes him faster and stronger. And then it kind of gets revealed that Harry Osborn is the green goblin, <laughs> Because the Green Goblin shows up, causes some mayhem, as a goblin likes to do. And of course, at first we think it's Norman Osborn. That's where the obvious signs are. History would tell you that that's who it is. But then, no, it's Harry. It's all tied into the green drugs he's taking. And it's this whole big thing. And then Harry disappears. Like It's like he goes to rehab or something. He's gone for multiple episodes, too, only to return... And it's like, hey, guys, <laughs> nothing happened, but he's back. And it's this whole thing where Peter doesn't really trust him, but also Harry doesn't know that Peter knows. So it's this back and forth until the very last episode. They do this weird kind of BS. This is the only negative I have of this show. They do this long wraparound explanation for why Harry Osborn actually was not the Green Goblin. Now, I know Twitter wasn't really a thing at this point, so it just it felt like as if fans hated the reveal of Harry Osborn being Green Goblin instead of Norman Osborn. But I, I don't know how else we would have gotten feedback from fans. I don't know how else the writers would have heard about it. I mean, maybe there were other ways. Maybe there was forums. Maybe there was places online where fans wrote and said, man, this sucks. Because at the very last second, the very last episode, they decide to reveal that it was actually Norman Osborn. Even though we saw Norman Osborn and the Green Goblin in the same place at the same time more than once, they do this long explanation that Harry, he was blacking out and passing out from the drugs that he was taking. And so Norman put the Green Goblin costume onto Harry and even broke his leg to match an injury that Norman had as Green Goblin so that Spider-Man would believe him so that he would frame him. Huh? <laughs> And then you find out that Norman hired Chameleon to pretend to be him. So that's how they were both there. But it's just, they didn't do a lot of buildup of Norman Osborn being the Green Goblin or having all these hints that it was really him the entire time. Like at first, obviously, he was involved, Norman was, in nefarious things with his business and with experiments. He was involved with a lot of experiments that led to the creation of multiple villains in the rogues gallery but just he himself being green goblin i don't know maybe it's just me who feels this way but this felt forced this felt like all right guys we effed up we should have made it norman osborne from the beginning so here you go 
Some of the other villains that we had throughout the series that I really enjoyed. The Vulture, another guy who got screwed over by Norman Osborn, and so he was trying to just get revenge on him. I kind of felt bad for the Vulture, if I'm being honest. Even Electro, same deal. I felt bad for this dude who didn't ask for the accident that happened to him. And he sort of didn't know what to do with himself. He had almost no choice. Sandman and Rhino, I really liked how they started off as buddies. Like criminal buddies that got hired by a bunch of people. And then they both on their own got experimented on and got their powers in the way that they did very surprising that an animated show a cartoon show handled each and every one of these villains origins very well and very straightforward very easy to follow almost better than some of the movies did with some of these characters doc ock was one character that i thought was a little generic more on the generic side. I mean, it's hard to top or match what Spider-Man 2 did with Doc Ock. So this one doesn't really have a personal relationship with Peter. And it just he's just a dude. He's a dude who just gets the arms. And so he's Doc Ock. But other than that, not a whole lot more to him. It was very cool, though, to see the Sinister Six. It's always cool to see the Sinister Six. And they even showed up. They came together in a couple of episodes, even swapping out some of the members of the group, which is very comic book accurate. And also, the lack of Kingpin being in this New York made it very interesting for this show to use other characters as mob-like figures, characters like Tombstone and hammerhead i just i don't know it made me kind of appreciate these characters more so than i ever had before other characters we had dr connors who peter did work for almost in like an internship way at the lab he wasn't as super close to him but he at least had a prior relationship so that when connors becomes the lizard it is a little more interesting although Connors is only the lizard for one episode. That's it. I was fully expecting him to turn into the lizard at least one more time. No, it never came. We just use Connors' lab for a bunch of other villains to get created. For example, this is how we get the black suit. And the black suit Spider-Man. I I wasn't sure if we were going to get the black suit Spider-Man story because I know that this show only lasted as long as it did and i think it even got canceled so maybe it ended without them fully knowing it was going to end but i was pleasantly surprised i love the black suit spider-man story even no matter how many different ways they do it as long as it gets the the core point of the story right to see a character like peter parker who is inherently good who is, at the end of the day, a good person who tries to do the right thing and always is looking out for other people, not selfish. The black suit is your chance to have all of that turned upside down. Have Peter act uncharacteristically and do a whole bunch of things that he normally wouldn't do and to see how that affects other people in his life. And so that's why I always appreciate it. And if I'm being honest... I always kind of thought the black suit looked cooler than the regular suit. Even though I love the regular suit, but that black suit, goddamn, it looks great. Eddie Brock. This time, Eddie Brock also worked in Connor's lab, but he was a childhood friend of Peter. That was quite different and interesting. Seeing that they had so much history, seeing them start off as friends and be super close, only for Eddie to sort of feel like Peter turned on him or betrayed him. And when Eddie becomes Venom, he obviously finds out Peter's secrets and he he just he develops this hatred for Peter. He he does what Venom should do. And this is what I love about the Venom character so much, right? I don't even know if I fully understood this as a kid for why I like Venom so much. It seemed like it was mostly because, well, Venom looks cool. <laughs> he does. And he looks like an evil version and a bigger version of Spider-Man. But here you get to see that he uses everything against Spider-Man. He makes it personal. He goes after Gwen, goes after Peter's loved ones, and he mind games the shit out of Spider-Man so many times throughout this. It's fascinating. It really 
reminded me just how good Venom can be as a character because God knows those Sony movies are doing such a shit job with the character that I I just he fell so much low on my Spider-Man villains list but this show helped bring it back very good Flash Thompson is a character that he goes to high school with and he's the usual jock maybe somewhat of a bully type character at the very beginning but I could not believe how much of an arc they gave Flash where he not only becomes friends with Peter at some point, but he even starts to give him advice. I mean, obviously, it starts off with him liking Spider-Man more than anything else. But him and Peter actually have a good relationship. Black Hat also is great because she comes in during the time when Peter was the black suit Spider-Man. So... Peter was more susceptible to maybe flirting with her and even dating her a little bit. But Black Cat, every time I see Black Cat represented in a cartoon or a video game, I think, what's taking so long for us to get this character in live action? She's great, and I'd love to see her bounce off of Spider-Man. Uh, not like that. Well, <laughs> maybe so. Aunt May is a character that's integral to... Peter especially this Peter I love the beginning when she's trying to place rules for him but he's breaking curfew and he's doing things because well he's Spider-Man and she at first doesn't really get what's going on and then when she has a heart attack man that was tough and they do the arrival of Mary Jane now this was great because they did it the exact way that it happens in the comics I love the whole she's a blind date and Peter doesn't He's not interested. He figures it's just going to be some scrub of a girl only to open the door. And holy crap, you just hit the jackpot, Tiger. But they tease that these two might possibly date only to have Mary Jane become more of a side character, more of just a friend. In fact, she's also a friend to Gwen Stacy, which was a pleasant surprise. Also enjoyed watching all of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man Easter eggs that were throughout this entire show. There were so many times, so many points, so many visuals that was a direct reference. And it makes sense. This came out just a year after Spider-Man 3. So the, the Tobey Maguire trilogy was very fresh in everyone's minds, but still... This show is very good. It is. And 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 I think this is one of the better Spider-Man animated series that I've seen. I don't know if I'm ready to say it's my favorite. I think I still like the 90s more. But this one, I enjoy. So guys, let me know in the comments below. What do you think of the spectacular Spider-Man? Do you like it as well? Is it a little disappointing? Because I know I am that this show ended abruptly and didn't get a proper finale. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later.